Tobin and Leroy here with you. 560 WQAM. You know these bums are counting ads now. What do you mean these bums? <laughs> waddle, baby, waddle. Nine ads is wild. Oh, <laughs> oh you know what? Because on their, uh, uh, there's a chance that while they're watching on YouTube or Twitch that they do have like a series of ads. Oh, okay. I'm not going to lie to you. If I saw nine ads before a video I wanted to watch, I'm like, wow. I'll dude. tell you what, man. You know what's getting crazy? I have like an Amazon Fire Stick. And oh. uh, I told you guys, like I'm a, I'm a sleep sounds guy. I like having the oh, ambient okay. noise. They and do commercials like, for your ambient sounds? Right, come on. But not even just like one. It used to just be like the same like <laughs> It used so to be like, like, first you in at Augusta. Yeah. And then you a slap chow. No, it won't it won't do it. It won't break in between. It's not like a it's not like that. But it used to just be like the same ad for like William Shatner in space. It was 30 seconds. I'm like, all right, let me set through this. Now it's like four ads up to two <laughs> minutes before I get to my damn fireplace on the beach. It's like H and R block. Oh, it's like, oh my god, I just want to get to sleep. <laughs> Oh uh, Waddle says, just download on the Alexa app on your phone. Tell it to play white noise. I suppose I could. Do we don't have Alexa. Yeah, I don't have one. I don't we have. have well, I think you could do it uh, if you have it on Siri? your phone. You just do that. Oh. Siri too. Yeah. Um, we'll get back into the heat and uh, got to get some dolphins as well. Chris Greer spoke to the media for like a half hour yesterday on a lot of stuff. Yeah, he said, yeah, he did, did you feel that. better about? <laughs> it? Well, he said some stuff. Did you feel better about the situation? I heard. I heard Omar and Perk getting into it. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. what were they getting into um, it about? Because Omar thinks they should draft a quarterback. In the I, I don't understand. I might be getting this wrong. And Perk, well, no, no, no. One of them, it might have been Perk, who says that you could get a quarterback. Or... Dude, uh, I, no, I got to be was... honest with you. Like, yeah. I, I've I've heard some of Omar like, oh, you got to bring in competition. I, all right, I'm not Here. against them bringing in competition. But my thing is, not with the first. Pick. How the hell with this roster, which Omar has documented, you know, their needs and the apocalypse or whatever he yes. calls it. Capocalypse. He's done all that. You really think the Dolphins, when they already have, they're gonna pay Tua. They're going to pay him. Yes. You think they can really afford to just use this pick on a quarterback? Like no. I don't understand that from people. And basically, my and Chris Greer basically said as much yesterday because he was like, "We have, we'll look into everything and." We have, but like nobody is looking at twenty one and being like, "This guy's gonna be a f- for sure plus, thing." Franchise. Plus, here, here's the other thing you also need to understand, right? That if you were to take a quarterback, even if you were thinking about it, right, he would have been a second or third round talent because all of the quarterbacks have gotten pushed up so much. Yeah. That what you end up with wouldn't be a first round quarterback. Yeah, if you if the Dolphins see a, a, a diamond in the rough, okay, I'm not against it, but like not with the first couple picks, no friggin' way. And and the other thing is is that and you like, want to talk about and like by the way, you want to talk about everything you've built into Tua's confidence, the 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 type of you know the type of work they've done on his development. And then you're gonna you're gonna put that guy through that. You've already because like you can say, oh, poor two. That's being a pro, dude. He's already been through that. Yeah, but, but I would say here, I would say, you as a player have to get to a point where that crap doesn't bother you anyway. Like I went, I think I got a contract extension. And they drafted Tommy Vardell. Mm-hmm. Like, and so I spent the first half of the year trying you know with them trying to force feed him right he gets hurt i go to the pro bowl like but if i had worried about who they brought in right you you can't that that's football don't so i'm not worried about that but i i will well, say I this you, i know you have listen, more pressing you, needs i'm not oh, i'm not overlooking i know how great a football player you were but you know this guy's got a, a, a national polarization and everything he does is a debate on a different level that if the Dolphins yes. were to do that, they the would everybody would read into it totally that attention different. is not going away after right. a, a training camp press conference. No, I got you, but the best man wins. If they bring any quarterback in, you're gonna have that. But but here's the deal. Like to say you need to have competition, 
You only need to have competition at the quarterback position if you're not sure who your quarterback is. And if you don't think your quarterback has drive, like okay, right? so that. and we we see it, we see it, we see it. We've seen guys coming. Like think about this. Why in the hell would uh, Philly bring in who they bring in Mac Jones? Right? No, wait. No, they brought in. Um... They brought in. Um... Who did Philadelphia bring in? No, because Mac Jones went to Jacksonville. So, so right. So let's like just use gonna, that. Like he's gonna push that, <laughs> right? That's, but that's but that's my point. point. That's my point. So if the Dolphins have brought in somebody like Mac Jones, right? What are you saying? You ain't saying nothing because why on earth would anybody in Jacksonville think that Mac Jones is gonna push, um, Trevor Lawrence? Guys Why would saying, anybody think that? Philly brought in Kenny Pickett. Kenny Pickett. There you go. So, Kenny. so, so there. Like, okay, like, oh, okay. Kenny Pickett is now in in Philly. You think, oh, in Philly, they're thinking, oh, now he's going to push our quarterback. No. Yeah, I don't know. My my thing with this team is they 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 need to hit on these picks because these guys need to provide something from right. a production standpoint. You know, last year their second round pick gave him nothing. Whether you want to blame coaching for it or whatever, it is what it is. He gave you nothing. And right. that's and, and that's, that point, and that sucks. Like you need you need to hit on those things. And at then that so point, at that point, you're not gonna be graded for what your guy can do four or five years from now. Right. If you draft him high enough, he needs to be able to participate on mm-hmm. Sunday on yes. a regular basis and and be some type of uh person that you look to and say he is um he is a part of this yeah so he didn't say anything that really stood out do you have any of it in it marcos is it, do you have any chris greer um and if it's okay if you don't because I, I don't but i can get whatever you like in 30 seconds if you could just get me him on uh the grades of their players at 21 because he was talking about the one thing you i found it. interesting is he said they don't have 21 players graded with a first round pick but that doesn't mean that they can't get their guy because he could say they don't have the quarterbacks. Well, it. one of the reasons why he's saying that, and this is what I heard, right? Mm-hmm. Of the guys they were thinking about getting, right? And of the guys that they graded out, right? Some of those guys, he's basically saying some of those guys getting picked up in the first 21 picks aren't graded as top 20 players in their minds. Right. So what that means that they can probably get somebody. And here's what's going to happen. I'm telling you right now because it happens every draft. Okay? They're going to get somebody that maybe they graded as a top 10 or 15 pick. And they're going to pick him up. And everybody's going to say, why? And it's because we got a top 10, top 15 pick at 20. That's why. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and that because with the quarterbacks and, like they say, all the offensive players – going as high as they are, then that means that you might have an opportunity for a really good defensive player, right? Or a nice offensive lineman or a position that people may not think that you need, but the talent graded out so high that you felt like you had to take it. Here's uh, Chris Greer on the grades. How many players would you feel comfortable taking at 21 that are on your board right now? Uh, I think I think we feel there'll be um, we definitely feel there will be one or two players that we really like. There is where we are right now. Um, we feel um, that we can get an impact player there that um, will help our team and roster, and uh, we'd be very excited to add. So we've we've gone through it a few times. We'll keep going through it here, you know. Um, but we feel good about who would be there at twenty one if if we were to pick there. So it's fair to say you have at least twenty one first round grades. Is that? That, uh, no, it's you know because you're asking that question because you know all that story when guys ask how many first, but no, um, as of right now we do not have 21 first round grades, um, but uh, we feel that again um, when teams are building for their roster, teams are looking at different things. So um, you talk to every team and they're usually in that 15 to 20 range on players, and um, but it varies from team to team what everyone's looking for. Who do you think cut like who do you think gets to protect the board? Is does he have like a fingerprint scan on his room on the war room? Because I would love for that to leak. Because here's the thing: no matter who does get picked at 21, 
Bet your ass they're gonna say, "Oh, he was on our board." Oh, oh that oh, guy was. Yeah, you know, you know the routine. <laughs> you, you know the routine. You know the routine, right? They all, all the coaches say the same thing. Nobody, nobody ever says, "Nah, nah we were lukewarm on him, and he was failed." No, they don't say. We got our guy. Everybody's doing that fake cheer in the war room. You know. Everybody's doing that fake celebration in the war room, right? Come on, we know. But but here's here's the the interesting. You know, part of uh, uh, about that is that you don't need to grade out twenty one guys because you know that five or six quarterbacks are going to be taken before you. Yes. So that makes it fifteen guys. You know, three wide receivers are probably going to be picked before they get to you. I tell right? you, one, if I was so a now, that's nine. That's twelve. Twelve guys. So you only need twelve first round grades of. The people that you're considering, the, the the positions that you are considering. I would, if I was a GM and I wasn't taking a QB, I'd be I'd be leaking like crazy to the media. Be like, man, I hear they like this guy too. He's moving up the boards. <laughs> oh, oh, you know the boards. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Mike McDaniel's. This is his first first round pick, and uh, Chris Greer says he won't stop bothering him. Oh, he has been out of his mind because now he's recommending everybody to me. So, <laughs> but it's been fun. He's in. Uh, you know, I've been watching a lot of players talking, uh, great communication. So it's been fun. I think he's very excited to have a good player, as we all are. Mike, Ooh, is- that's what I should do for the draft, huh? What? Dave Sob say Leroy got a snacks big board. Oh, yeah. Oh, 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 oh yeah. Oh, <laughs> Jay, can we do a snack draft? Oh, I'll, whatever you want, dude. Oh, but he, I love that. Mike McDaniel's like, oh. Chris, 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 Chris. Yeah, Mike. <laughs> I got somebody. Does he run a 4 2? How'd you know? <laughs> oh, dude. Could you, could you imagine? Could you imagine? Fast guy from Texas. Oh, hey, I got, I got, I got. It. Do we have a whiteboard there? Uh, yeah, we do. Some okay, we, I, I'll figure. We got to figure it out. We got to figure it out. Because I have oh. a, I have a candy guy. Hmm? A, a candy guy. I know a guy who owns a candy store. You like, know a guy who owns a candy store, huh? Yeah. Mm. All right, I'm yeah. listening. And he said he could come in and we could do a snack draft, a candy draft. I love that. Wow. Wow. 